So you've just gotten your first adjustment. That's very exciting, but it's also some really important things you should know when you go home. First of all, we have our list of don'ts. Now, very often when people hurt or they have an injury, whether it's acute or chronic, the very first thing they try to do is stretch. Worst thing you can do right now. Stretching is actually going to lengthen and weaken a muscle, which is designed to protect the place of injury. Stretching is not for pain relief. Stretching is a nice, healthy, well-being thing to do, but is not appropriate right now. The other thing you don't want to do is ice or heat, unless I have tell, told you otherwise. Maybe 10% of people who come in, I tell them they need to ice to reduce swelling and inflammation. Otherwise, icing will slow the healing process down, and heat, when put it on in the, wrong, in the wrong situation, can actually increase pain and lengthen the injury. So, unless I have told you otherwise, and don't overdo it. You might feel great after your first adjustment, you might feel terrible after your first adjustment. The truth is, it does not matter because not a lot of tissue change happens after your first adjustment. If you feel great, that doesn't mean you are great. So don't go out and start playing football after you get a great chiropractic adjustment, no matter how good you feel. Now, some of the do's here. Gentle movement. Gentle movement is really important. We'll go over some of the movements today and mobilizing and gelling the discs and joints and muscles of your back. And this is done without stretching, and we'll go over a couple of the, the main silver bullets uh, before done here. Gentle activities. If you can possibly do it, no uh, knee issues, hip issues, or the back issue is not uh, so extreme, walking will actually improve um, the the edema and inflammation in the low back, it can actually push those out, flush them out through the lymphatic system. Uh, it's just very good for the joints. So gentle movements um, like walking are great at this time. And then hydrate. When I do an adjustment and we break up scar tissue or we move a bone and we're getting that disc to hydrate, we also push out toxins. And those toxins, can you can get sore just from the toxins. So hydration will help flush those toxins out more readily, which is critical if we're trying to minimize soreness and maximize healing. Now, I'm on my knees right now, and it's not just because the, the board is really low, but it's also because we're gonna go over two exercises that are in the safe zone right now, no matter how bad the problem is, as long as you do it exactly as I say. So the first one you're going to do on your back. It's a great thing you can do right when you wake up in the morning, you wake up, your knees are gonna be slightly bent, and what you're gonna do is you're going to tilt your hips side to side while pulling your stomach in. So knees are bent, tummy is in, and you're gonna tilt your hips side to side, which is going to compress and decompress the disc and joint and naturally gel out the muscles. Doesn't this look exactly like the wobble chair? And it is, it's like a back alley wobble chair is what we call it. Then you're gonna go forward and backward Forward and backward is trickier, especially when you hold, don't hold your head up unless you're talking to the camera. But this is going to, again, emulate the wobble chair, and then you're safe to get out of bed, pushing yourself up from your side just like that is exactly how you want to get out of it, dropping your legs off the table. Now, the next thing we're going to go over is the wall squat. This is not like high school basketball wall squat. This is designed to support your pelvis and your low back and get them to work together. We're gonna to keep our feet one foot distance apart from the wall. So see, I got my foot one foot distance away from the wall. And then I'm going to put my other foot next to it and go out hip width apart. Now I haven't really done anything yet. My low back is going to be pulled against the wall so that it's perfectly flat. This is the hardest part. Then you're gonna drop your knees down until you cannot see your feet, but no further. So you can tell I'm not that far down. I'm not 90 degrees and maybe 120 degrees. So it's not a major leg workout. It's a, it's a pelvic stabilizer and it's gonna engage the core muscles here. So keep your head flat against the wall and you hold this statically for a good 30 seconds to a minute or whatever you can see in. But the tilts and hulas in bed and the wall squat can be done multiple times throughout the day because it is in the safe zone. It's what we call a silver bullet and it's only gonna help stabilize the adjustment and get you to your goals faster. So enjoy and happy healing.